want to encourage you to stick around afterwards and hang out for a bit in the atrium. And I'm sure there'll be a pub trip with some people if you can go. Let's keep building relationship. Just take a moment to be still. Lord, we're so hungry to meet with you. We so often come to a table when we're hungry. Tonight, God, I want us to come. Lord, help us to come to this table so hungry for you. Holy Spirit, we need you. We need you, Lord. Draw us to yourself. feeling like the Lord is saying, I'm, I'm speaking to my people, I want to speak to my people. And I'm saying, Lord, what are you saying? And I've got no idea. But I trust that he's speaking to you and he wants to speak to you powerfully this evening. And God wants to speak by his spirit to your hearts. Be ready, be attentive to what he's saying. We're in a real turbulence, aren't we? Not just us in this room, I mean, particularly, but as a nation. It feels like there's this extraordinary turbulence going on. Um, everything, the number of conversations I've had this week where people keep look, looking at me going, everything, every system, every, uh, all the, not just politics, but everything, like, seems to be in chaos. There seems to be chaos around so much of what's going on. Things that we've been so used to, the rhythm of things that we've been used to, that suddenly are just shaking. And it shouldn't surprise us, because we've been talking about this in church for ages, that God's going to shake the world, something is being shaken. Right back when we talked about Acts chapter 16, for those of you who are here six or seven months ago, I know some of you have joined since, we were talking about this sense in which God is shaking all that is created in order that his name might be glorified. And so whilst it's turbulent, be encouraged, church, that God is with us and he's doing something new. It might feel uncomfortable and even stormy at times. It was so interesting that, um, I don't even know who brought that, the storm thing. Just, oh, um, Mark, you were praying and just talking about the storm. I'd been really pondering the storm earlier, earlier today, a storm that um, I was caught up in my life. And I was thinking, do I, am I meant to bring that tonight, God? Or what is it? Why do you keep reminding me of that? So maybe we'll come to it, I don't know. But this sense of like a storm that was coming and brewing. And then quite rightly, as Mark said, as we were walking into church, there's storm, there's thunder going on. And whenever you're caught in a thunderstorm, there's a sense, isn't there, of this is there's something shaking. The depths of something shaking. God is in the midst of the shaking. He's not absent in it. He's present in this current shaking. And he is shaping things in order that he might be glorified. This storm that I was in, I'll just tell you about it briefly now that I've talked about it, but um, I was the privilege of being in Israel a few years ago, um, four, three, four years ago, uh, about four years ago, 2018. And we had been talking as a small group of us that had gone um, about what God was up to. And we'd been studying this poem about a storm. And the storm was connected to Jacob wrestling at the Jabbok River. With, with the angel through the night and this kind of time of transition which I talked about in the Coldplay series and we're talking about this, this poem which was all about a storm and the, the Jacob storm and on that day we were talking about this poem and this story of Jacob because we were going to go and look at the Jabbok River from afar, we were going to stand on this, on this hill and look across at the Jabbok River and as we were going to this place the skies were blue 
absolutely blew. It looked amazing. The place was, it was great. But as we were driving towards this viewing platform we were going to, um, with the sun shining, there was a sense of God wanting to speak. And we got out onto this hill and and as we came up onto this hill, we decided, I, I gave the, this friend of mine who was leading this trip, I gave him the poem and said, hey, you should read out the poem we were looking at this morning. Well, just before we look at it. And literally, I, there's no exaggeration. As he began reading this poem, the wind came up. And suddenly clouds of dust started coming down the valley, overlooking the Jordan. And, um, and then this, this Jabbok River across the way. And, and this storm cloud started coming. And then suddenly the wind coming up we were very aware of a storm coming. And so this, this poem finished, and by this time it was like flapping around the paper in the wind. It suddenly seemed like this sudden moment of storm, and we all went separate ways to spend some time on the hill looking across. And the, the guide we were with, who was a really amazing Jewish man who knew so much history of Israel, and, and he's sort of looking across and he was pointing, this is this just where that hill is, that's where the Jabbok River is. That's as close as we can get because it's on the other side of the border. That's where it is. So we knew where it was. We'd read this story and we went to our separate ways and stood there. And again, as we stood there, these clouds came over the hill we were standing on, almost like in a pillar. And they came across and they rested right on the hill that he had pointed out. And it was extraordinary. In fact, there's a, there is a, oh yeah, there you go. Okay, I sent this photo to Sam. He's, that was quick. Someone give Sam Udi a round of applause. I literally sent this to him about three minutes ago. How did you do that? That is extraordinary. This is the photo I took. Because we were there and this, this cloud was full of lightning and thunder. And it came to rest on exactly the hill where he'd said us the Jabbok River was. You can see the sun is sh still shining on the right hand side. A matter of maybe 15, 20 minutes before this photo, it was blue skies everywhere. And this cloud had come through and rested. I had one of the most profound encounters with God. I mean, it looks like something out of the Bible, doesn't it? When they talk about the pillar of cloud leading them by like, day. And it was like this pillar of cloud just rested. And God just spoke to me about, um, he said, Pete, you're going into the year of the storm. For me personally, your year ahead is like an incredible storm, but I'm telling you about it so that you know that I am in the midst of the storm. Amazingly, rainbows started appearing just at that moment. I mean, it was like this full-on display from God. It was great. I came home from that trip and that moment trans had transformed me and my expectations. Slightly trepidation, but also a sense of, God, what are you doing? I annoyed Sarah because from that night onwards, I went, went to bed with storm sounds on Alexa every night. I said, Alexa, play storm sounds. And Sarah's like, oh, please, not again, not again. For an entire year, that following year, it was probably the most stormy year of my life. It was one of those moments that showed me how futile I was and how weak I was and how I didn't have what it would take. It was full of disappointments and discouragement. It was really difficult and there were moments in that year where I nearly gave up and nearly walked away. It was a year of the storm. I don't fully know why I'm telling that story because I hadn't planned to and I've got to change my whole talk now because we've got to get to communion in the next few minutes. Except to say that this is a storm we're in right now. That storm was for me personally. I don't believe he was declaring that over all of us or anything. But there's a storm going on right now. And there's this call of God for us to be ready in that storm. And to know that he is present in it. There's a call of God to know that he is present in the storm. That you don't need to fear in the midst of the storm. You don't need to be caught by the headlines that are screaming for everybody to be in more anxiety and fear. But you need to know that God is in the midst of the storm. You need to be ready to say, God, I want this. I want to come back. There's no more big storm. Sammy, let me just deal with Sam.
feel even more and strong about this right now because that was a major distraction on a moment where we are needing to get clarity. Um, and so this is not a proper sermon and I'm apologizing for no exegesis from a biblical passage that I had prepared. I've spent hours this week on Hebrews 10. But I feel like maybe all that needs to be said is this. This is a moment to be under the Lordship of Christ. This is a moment to be centering yourself around Jesus. This is a moment to be saying, God, in the midst of the storm, you are here. And if anything can teach us that, it's communion. If anything can draw us to that, it is communion. Because this is the thing that God has instituted for us to draw us back and make sure that Jesus is Lord of our lives again and again. The night that he was betrayed, he was with his friends and came to table at the communion table and he shared the bread and wine, which was a part of the rhythm of the meal that he was in, celebrating Passover, but he reconsecrated it, he remade it, he spoke something fresh in it because he knew there was such a storm coming that he was giving his disciples such a powerful and deeply spiritual symbol. It was more than just a, a nice symbol like a, a, a Nike tick or some logo that he was putting on his movement. This was a deeply powerful sacramental thing that he was saying, do this as often as you remember me. Take the bread and take the wine because when the storms come, you need to know that I'm deeply present. Not in a distant way, but I am absolutely in you. As you consume this bread and this wine, you consume my body and my blood. You set me at the center of who you are. You tell me that I am Lord of your life. And this is the call of communion. It's a recognition that Jesus Christ is center to everything. And anything that doesn't position Jesus at the center is not the kingdom of God. It's not where we need to be positioned. We need to have him center in our lives. And so this call to communion is a moment for us right now of saying, despite the storm, despite what we see around us falling to pieces, Jesus, you are center of it all. And I invite you, God, come and be Lord of my life. Every time we come to communion, we go through a process of confession, communion, and consecration. And we come and we say, God, I know that in the midst of this storm, I don't have what it takes. I am flawed and weak and I don't know all the answers. I haven't got everything lined up. We come in our confession of our own suffering. God, because of this broken world, all sorts of things are really going awry for me. Sometimes it's stuff I've done that has displeased you. Sometimes it's stuff I've not done that I've just missed out that I should have done. And some stuff is just this broken world and I'm in a mess. I confess. But then he invites us to communion. Just as Jesus to those disciples, knowing they didn't have all the answers and they were going into the biggest storm of their lives that night. He's like, I want you to be with me to be with me. I want you to be with me. Receive my body and my blood. Communion with God. This is what this is. Some of you say, oh, we had communion at church. Do you ever stop to think what that means? Communion with God. He makes you one with himself. He wins you for himself. You get to have peace connection, depth with God. Confession, communion, and consecration. You see, through this communion, we're made holy. And this is not like holiness in a sense of like, right now we're all perfect, perfection. There is the sort of a sense in which God is making all things right and he's bringing things to make all things right. But it's a holiness that is a oneness with God. That's what he's doing in consecration. It's like he's setting you apart for the tasks ahead. It's he's making you holy, setting you up to be able to step forwards in the midst of whatever the storms might throw at you. There's a consecration that happens as we receive this communion. And God wants to establish that for us. We take communion regularly. In this service about once a month, every day, every Sunday at the church, at our morning service. And whenever we take communion, whether it's now at the end of a service or at the beginning of a service or in the middle of a service, wherever we do it, I want to encourage us as a church, remember that flow from 
confession to communion to consecration. And this evening, I believe that he wants to do the talking as you receive communion. He wants to speak to you about being ready for the storms. He wants to prepare you that he's in the midst of it all and will use you powerfully as he consecrates you tonight. If you're not a follower of Jesus this evening, perhaps you're here with a friend or you've come in, a, in some sort of uh, just visiting, walking past the church, you're like, what's this? It may be this evening that you want to give your heart and life to him. There's so much to explain about that. Come on, Alpha. Have conversations with anyone around who's been leading the service. But tonight, I want to invite you particularly, why don't you come and receive communion and make this your first act of saying, Jesus, you are Lord. You're Lord of it all. I want you at the centre of this. So God, I pray, would you speak to us? Do what you want to do. I believe you're doing much more. You're doing stuff in the layers of the very um, things I've said. God, I believe you're speaking to people around this room. As we come into this communion with you, would you consecrate us, God? Purify us. Make us holy, Lord.